Next up, we'll look at ketamine, probably the second most common induction agent you'll use. Chemically, ketamine is a fencyclidine derivative, and it's particularly useful in emergency settings for reasons that will become clear in a moment. When used IV as an induction agent, the standard dose is one to two milligrams per kilogram, and then you can give IV boluses thereafter at 0.5 mg per kg as maintenance. It can also be given intramuscularly, in which case you'll need a much higher dose of 10 milligrams per kilogram. So in this case, it's useful if you have a more concentrated solution to avoid having to use large volumes. So ketamine comes as 10, 50 and 100 milligrams per mil. So definitely worth checking the bottle carefully. There are two isomers of ketamine, or more specifically enantiomers. The S enantiomer is two to four times more potent than the R enantiomer, and the S enantiomer is also less psychotomimetic. Ketamine itself is a weak base. In solution, it has a pH of three and a half to five and a half, and a pKa of seven and a half. When it's injected, up to half of it becomes protein bound, but it works within about 30 seconds of IV injection. It has a volume of distribution of three liters per kilogram of body weight, so while its distribution half-life is only 10 minutes, it's actually eliminated from the body much slower, with a terminal half-life of three hours. In the liver, it's metabolized to the active metabolite norketamine, which is further metabolized to inactive conjugates, which are renally excreted. Then we come on to its pharmacodynamics. The really important thing to note about ketamine is that it inhibits noradrenaline reuptake and increases sympathetic tone, and that will help you to work out a lot of the systemic effects. Let's start with the central nervous system. Ketamine induces a state of profound analgesia and dissociative anesthesia, and it does that by reversibly inhibiting NMDA receptors. Ketamine also increases the cerebral metabolic rate for oxygen, which is met by an increase in cerebral blood flow, and therefore raised intracranial pressure and intraocular pressures. The emergence phenomena of ketamine can be quite problematic though, with very unpleasant hallucinations. Unlike other induction agents we're looking at, ketamine actually increases respiratory drive. It's a bronchodilator, so sometimes used in severe asthma, but it's also worth remembering that laryngeal reflexes are preserved, so the likelihood is you'll need to paralyze the patient to manage their airway. Due to its sympathomimetic effects, ketamine increases the cardiac output, heart rate, and blood pressure. The central venous pressure is also raised. I've grouped gastrointestinal effects with genitourinary ones here, so uterine tone, oral secretions, and the risk of post-op nausea and vomiting are all increased. So there's your whistle-stop tour of ketamine. As you can see here, it has some very useful properties for inducing anesthesia in unstable patients that need emergency intubation.